All right. Well, I, I realized that at that point that the armed march was irresponsible, not because of the concept or not because of the ideals behind it, not because of Kathy Lanier, chief of police in D.C., promising violence, but because I was not properly set up for it. And I was not capable of organizing this from a jail cell. I was, if they were gonna be able to just disappear me, then it would be irresponsible of me to say, go on, um, you know, here's an event that's gonna be organized and well put together, because I couldn't guarantee it at that point. So I canceled it, but I, I thought that that I really wanted us to, to continue the, the purpose of the march, was, which is to raise awareness on a much broader scale, not just about how the government treats people's individual rights, but that, Self-defense is a civil right. It is a fundamental human right to be able to defend yourself how you see fit. And in a sense, I succeeded beyond my wildest dreams. We had incredible, you know, wall-to-wall -wall media coverage when that happened, especially local TV. Every time there was anything going on, anytime I went to court, um, well, when I was in jail, every time I was on TV, all the other inmates would be cheering. At least once I got to general population out of solitary confinement, which I was in for two months. But they uh, they responded with a SWAT team raid, and you know I, I feel kind of naive. I, I really do feel silly in the sense that I, I radically underestimated the personal cost that this would entail. Well, to well me. listen, I'm not tooting my horn, and I said I admired your courage, but I said they were going to come after you and maybe even yeah. kill you, and I told you because they, they they fear an armed march because uh, it's not at their time. I've seen their provocateurs do it before. I know you're not a provocateur. So they could then demonize a movement under Clinton. But now they don't want that because they know the public would be behind that. If they yeah. crushed you, it would probably start a new 1776 shot heard around the world. And I told you, I said, get ready for shot heard around the world. We're starting to win in the info at war, Adam. I don't know if this is a good move, but you have a right as a free man. You know, it, it's like this article here. This was part of the info war, Alex. This was part of raising awareness. And in that part, I, I feel extremely successful. No, I agree, but they have a guy running for uh, uh, office in Florida, you know, who said that he agreed with someone saying that, uh, you know, uh, I'm past impeachment. It's time to hang him high, talking about Obama. And the Secret Service went to him, and I never called for violence on Obama. He's a puppet. But at a certain point, when we're being attacked, as, as Professor Turley uh, said before Congress a month ago, when there is a unitary executive and dictatorship coming in, and the government's lawless, I mean, our founders you know, did start resisting. And, and my only point is, I want to fix this peacefully. But but they are marching against us with violence. They are gearing up for war with us. The war has already begun, as Patrick Henry said. So uh, where do you see all this going? Because, because, I mean, what do you say about treason? I mean, by all yardsticks, Obama has committed high treason on hundreds of fronts. And so they're going to go and say, why are you saying he should be hanged? O obviously, he's saying he should be hanged because he's politically a traitor. I don't think the guy's saying he wants to hang Obama. So, But I mean, my issue is we get to the point of, you, you know, it's like, what this guy said, you know, that it's high noon when it's high noon. I mean, you know, he called it what it is. I mean, it, is the truth uh, a criminal act? Go ahead. Well, Alex, the only people who call you paranoid are the ones who are ignorant about how much we have to be afraid of. And you're absolutely right. And 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 I gotta I gotta hand it to you. You 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 were a better estimate here, estimator here of, of the potential costs of my activism. And regardless now, I'm on probation for two years, I'm banned from DC, and I'm gonna be sticking to my media production, focusing on the book that I've written and, and getting back to full production. So about those bigger questions that you raise, I, I'm, I think I'm a little more optimistic. And I, I believe that people are waking up. I believe there's a paradigm shift happening. And you're right that we're coming to a, a dangerous point that, you know, especially with the NSA where it is and, and the administration being, you know, completely, uh, you know, unrepentant about all the violations of privacy and all of the, the incredible hypocrisy coming out of the Obama administration. And, you know, you're, you're absolutely right that, that, that such, you know, things would be justified and that, that we'd be much better off if, if we could have Obama impeached, but that in and of itself isn't gonna do it. You know, you need the foundation of the change in the thinking of the people. And, and that's why, you know, your work as an info warrior, that is so much more important than, than any particular manifestation of it. But as you know, I'm running for president in 2020 on the platform of an orderly dissolution of the federal government. 
And as libertarians, we get accused of being uh, heartless often or, or, or not compassionate enough to the less fortunate in society. And we know, who, those of us who believe in libertarianism, because we believe that liberty is inherent to self-ownership as human beings, anything less is some form of slavery. We understand that that's about the non-aggression principle, that a free society is one where universal non-violence is, is embraced. This is the most compassionate philosophy possible. But we really do fail ourselves and, and we fail to represent ourselves well when we fail to acknowledge the reality of the current situation, how many people are dependent. And it seems often that, that, that a lot of libertarians are kind of hoping for a collapse when we should be working towards a smooth transition. Oh, I agree. I do not want to collapse. The right. system wants a collapse so they can reorganize on record Cloward and yes. Piven. Of course, I use that as an example as it's well known. Cloward and Piven didn't invent imploding something to control and re-engineer a society. The Romans did that. The Babylonians did that. Uh, you know, the Egyptians did that to the Israelites. I mean, this is how governments do this. And they say, oh, the Constitution's old. No, it's the new idea. They're taking us back to feudalism because they're threatened by a real renaissance of human empowerment. They're selling the fake transhumanist movement uh, as an idea of human empowerment when they're actually jacking into it their fraudulent systems of control. They're not real transhumanists. I mean, it's all counterfeit frauds. The system's scared. But I don't think the system can manage all the things they're creating and running. And so undoubtedly, it's going to come down. The question is, can it be a soft landing? Right. And nobody can really predict what's going to happen in, in the midterm. You know, we can look at the short term trends. But in the long term, what's clear is that government is being rendered obsolete because we know that relationships based on voluntary cooperative interactions rather than coercive, forceful, violent reactions are, are always going to be more positive, are always going to be better for humanity. Technology is empowering us to do this and it is it is giving us the way forward. And and I'm I'm really hopeful that people will embrace this idea, this message of localization, that we that we dissolve governments from the top down. And and you're absolutely right that they, they the the elite would rather have a collapse because that gives them just another opportunity to institute a new racket, a new form of government, and, and possibly even consolidate power. But if we do this in an orderly manner, we, what we need to do is fill the power vacuum that would be there with self-government and localization provides the mechanism of doing this. Now, the last time we spoke, Alex, you know, we had a wonderful, vibrant debate about, you know, how we get to this point. And, and I don't know if, if your, your uh, perspective has changed with, with some of the recent news and, and, you know, looking at the federal government as, as a concept, but uh, you only, as far as I'm concerned, you only have one extreme viewpoint, and that is that we can salvage the federal government at all, or that if we have such a paradigm shift, that we should try to reform it or no, no, it's just that it's just that we could sell to the public truthfully a re-upload of the Bill of Rights Constitution, and and because you're not going to they're not going to understand because it isn't a revolution. Well, they've had a revolution of tyranny against the American system. We could re-upload the old republic. And, and, and that would be a hell of a lot better than the collapse and the Agenda 21 takeover. And then through that system that allows freedom, we could then phase out the government within the republic system. Well, I, I absolutely agree with you that that would be a huge step forward. And if it happens that way, Alex, I will support it and enthusiastically reap all of the benefits for society that, that would come from, from such a reorganization. However, I do believe that we're much more likely, not just, to, as you say, to sell this to the broader public, but, but really to, to make steps forward much more immediately by dissolving the federal government, restoring state governments as sovereigns. You know, the, the, the structure that we have in the United States provides us that framework. And if we're able to do that, that also restores the idea of sure, self government. Sure. Here, here's the problem. The, the federal government's already been transferred to the globalist. They've already infected all the private and public pension funds, universities, everything. They're not stupid by design with their fraudulent derivatives. 76% plus of Western money goes into comprehensive annual financial report, double set of books. We've already been totally taken over, Adam. And so they're doing a circumnavigation in run, trying to take over the libertarian movement at Bilderberg and at other levels, and I mean, I've been contacted by, by multiple ultra high level sources in the last month. I mean, just ultra as high, I mean, just the very, like right below the actual owners. I mean, f you know, f famous technocrats, you name it. I mean, you know, the Kissinger group years ago, you know, tried to get me to join with them. But the point is, is that, and I, and, and, you know, it's like the 
godfather when he meets with the other head guys and he, and he says, you know, I met with you because I know you're a serious man, I need respect. At a certain point, though, it does show that we have power, that the establishment would even be reaching out to people like myself, and I'm sure reaching out to many others, because they know that, that liberty's popular, that liberty's rising, that the zeitgeist is rising. The uh, Financial Times of London said that last week. They understand that. They can't beat us. They can't even co-opt us, but they're trying to then blame government that was used as a sieve to suck money to corporations that are bigger than governments and act like governments, corporate cronyism, to then implode everything and then bring in corporate governance on top of it that's even worse because it's so much more predatory and coordinated than government sometimes that government is screwed up is actually a buffer to their corporate centralization that is so much more even deadly and it becomes maybe a fourth branch of government separation of powers is what i'm saying so that you don't get that one sauron level controller system worldwide you see what i'm saying i'm talking yeah. about real real political science real geopolitical integration real real politic Go ahead. Yeah, well, absolutely. But one of the appeals of localization is that it doesn't matter if you're a liberal or a conservative or a mainstream statist. It appeals to everybody because it means that everybody will have more local government. No, that's what I want. Yeah, I want that. They need, you know, and it also allows for the reclamation of property that has been unjustly acquired by all of these mega corporations. But one way or another, this is the future of humanity, Alex. And and it's it's just it's amazing to be in the fight, you know, with someone like you and to be a part of this to. To be to, to see this evolutionary process, to be on the verge of, of this paradigm shift. I mean, you can you can see, as as you said, liberty. It, it, it I don't know if it's popular yet, but it's it's just certainly a lot more than it was. Well, the growth curve shows it going through the stratosphere. And exactly, exactly, and and sooner or later, it's going to be the status quo. We just have to keep doing what we're doing, and and it's it's a, it's a beautiful time to be alive. You know, you mentioned the technology. I think the technology is so key to human empowerment. Just you know, the, what we're able to do with the internet. You know, like we, kids with smartphones in high school classrooms being able to 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 check, you know, fact check their teachers, their their paid government propagandist indoctrinators, and being able to go, wait a second. You know, you can lie to us, but you can't. Get away with it anymore. The fact that you know, even even uh, production as, as industrialization as a, as a concept that leads to centralization and some form of corporatism. You know, 3D printing is going to kill that. The idea of government being able to do things in the dark and not have accountability when we all have contacts, uh, contact lenses that are video cameras that, that that upload to the cloud. I mean, what we're coming to, and and I know it, it might sound far fetched, but I I know to your audience who's uh, attuned to these trends. You see these things as right around the corner, and you go, wow, you know, can you even imagine the kind of government we have today existing in a world where people have this kind of access to information and that kind of empowerment? No, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, though. Obsolete. Absolutely. But they're built, they built the grid with back doors and kill switches and control algorithms that before they allow a liberty singularity, they're going to use the system to actually selectively shut it off and program the public. And there's the downside, the lowering IQs, the loss of skills, the You're screen right. time, the rewiring yeah. of brains. I, and what I'm telling you, Adam, is they foresaw this a long time ago and made the decision to hardwire into the grid an anti-human suppression system. And I, and if, it's, and if the, and it, it's something we have to watch out for, and the, the, the term that I use, or the way that I describe it is, you know, we, we can hope that government spares us in its death throes as it violently clings to power. I know, but it's, it's major corporations that have been running and directing the government since the days of Eisenhower on record. I'm mm -hmm. saying, how do you respond to the private corporate technocrats that only use government as an enforcement mechanism? Well, you take away the enforcement mechanism, and through localization, you reclaim unjustly acquired property. And it's not a perfect solution, Alex. You know, because you're someone who cares about this. You're you're incredibly compassionate, and you you see these problems, and and you want to avoid the collapse. So, I, you know, it, it's there's there's no there, you know there's there's no fun easy way to untangle this knot. But we you know we can make it as smooth as possible by by really grabbing onto these issues. Well, I know this. You know what you're saying, and what Ron Paul and many others are saying is a lot and what i'm saying is a lot better plan than what they want is total collectivization total control and basically slavery overseen by robots and tech i mean you know anything's better than that well and in fact a, a collapse of this evil system is better than them winning
Well, you mentioned you mentioned my experience uh, with the Marines in, in civil affairs in, in Fallujah in 2004. And a, a big Tell you what, stay there. I'm coming right back to you. All We're right. going to cover that, get into more, and then, and then take phone calls. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.